Hello everyone, welcome to Design Hub. In Design Hub, we provide quality technical content related to the design industry using practical concepts. So, to upgrade yourself please subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. This video is intended to familiarize first-time users of finite element analysis. This video covers all the steps involved in solving a certain problem using SOLIDWORKS simulation. These steps are important to learn as they are the foundation to perform various kinds of analysis that we have talked about it in the previous video. Any SOLIDWORKS simulation project must begin with a SOLIDWORKS model, which can be either a part or an assembly. The initial step is to define the properties of the material, the loads, and the restrictions. The model geometry is then divided into relatively small and readily formed entities known as finite elements, as is always the case when utilizing any FEA-based analytic tool. And finally results are calculated and analyzed. When employing finite elements, the SOLIDWORKS simulation solver approximates the desired outcome, for instance, stress, by merging the individual element solutions. Let's see the problem we will solve and how to do the simulation here, you can see the model of the cantilever beam. The name of the problem is bending causes shear in a cantilever beam. We have to analyze the cantilever beam by performing static linear analysis when the beam is subjected to forces Fx, and Fy in the respective directions as shown here. And the beam is fixed on the left-hand side. Assume the beam is attached to the wall. The steps we will follow are first we will assign a material to the model because the material assigned to a part determines its response. SOLIDWORKS simulation must be aware of the elastic characteristics of the parts material. Secondly, we will establish connections in the model. The third step is to apply fixtures. You can provide zero or non-zero displacements on vertices, edges, or faces using the fixture property manager for static, frequency, buckling, dynamic, and nonlinear research. You can apply restraints using a chosen reference geometry. The reference may be a face, axis, plane, or another object. The next step is to define external loads, the reason we are doing the simulation is to check how much load the part can tolerate and withstand. And lastly, we will do meshing. Meshing is the process of breaking the model up into smaller components. Programs for finite element analysis view the model as a network of connected elements. Design analysis must include the phase of meshing. An automated mixed mesh of solid, shell, and beam elements is produced by the software. And we will check for the results afterward. I am going to quickly make this once again in SOLIDWORKS. Observe the directions. After completion of the modeling. First, we will add the SOLIDWORKS simulation tool. For that, go to Tools in the main menu and, then to Add-ins. And from the Add-ins dialog box select the SOLIDWORKS simulation, and tick on both boxes or one on the left according to your preference. Also, you can add the SOLIDWORKS add-ins tab, and you can activate the SOLIDWORKS simulation if required. Now to start the simulation, select Simulation. Select the new study, we will do a linear static study. You can give a name to your study to differentiate it from the rest that you will do in the future. Just stay connected with us. Now, about the simulation protocol, you will see property defining options in the simulation tab. You can also define mentioned properties from simulation manager. We will begin by assigning material to the cantilever beam. The material we have chosen here is AISI 1045, cold drawn steel. 
you can change the units of the properties in the material dialog box. Medium Tensile AISI 1045 steel is offered in hot rolled or normalized black color. This material has a yield tensile strength of 530 megapascals, an ultimate tensile strength of 625 megapascals, and a Brunel hardness of 170 to 210. In either the normalized or hot rolled condition, AISI 1045 steel exhibits high strength and impact properties as well as good weldability and machinability. The second step is establishing connections. Connections are introduced when we have more than one part. Since we only have one part here, connections are not applicable. The third step is fixtures. Fixtures are applied to the model to stabilize the model. If you haven't covered the types of fixtures topic, watch it first to understand it more properly, you can check it from the description. Now, since the beam is attached to the wall the support here is fixed. We will select the fixed geometry and apply it on the left side of the cantilever beam which means three reaction forces are acting that is horizontal, vertical and moment. You can change the color, and size of the symbol for the different types of fixtures in the symbol settings. The next step is to introduce the external loads, where you can select the types of load that is acting on the part. Here, two forces are acting on the part, one in the downward direction on the edge of the beam where, the value of the force is 2000 newtons. To introduce it in the model, select the faces, edge, or vertex for the reference and the force will act normally. But to introduce it in the selected direction for this problem, select the front face, and for the direction select the side edge. and the tensile force in the X direction has a magnitude of 3000 newtons. Now, in the fifth step, we will define the type of meshing in the beam. Go to the definition tab in the mesh property manager and drag the pointer all the way to fine. This will provide us the more accurate results. Now select the mesh parameters and select standard mesh because we need an orderly mesh. You can see the global size of the tetrahedral element and the tolerance given to an element. Change the element size unit to millimeters. The element size in this case is 1.27047 millimeters and the tolerance is always 5% of the global size. The size of the element is automatically generated based on the geometric features of the model. The usage of the word finite highlights the fact that the elements are not infinitesimally small, but rather little in comparison to the size of the complete model. The process of meshing is also known as the creation of finite elements. When employing finite elements, the SOLIDWORKS simulation solver approximates the desired outcome, for instance, stress, by merging the individual element solutions. You can right-click mesh in the simulation manager and select details to view the mesh's details you will be able to see details about the current model, including the name of the study, the element size, tolerance values, and the mesh type, which is solid mesh in this example. Additionally, the total number of nodes and components formed will be displayed, and the meshing time computation will also be noted. Due to the intricacy of the model and the software's attempt to construct the best model meshing, the number of nodes and components may vary slightly. It's important to save your model. Just save it and proceed with the linear static study. We will conduct this study and review the findings after meshing. In the simulation manager, right-click the study's name and select Run. That concludes the video. In the next video, we will do a comparison study, and understand after result part of the SOLIDWORKS simulation. Thanks for watching. 
Until then learn and grow.